Hi everyone, Ollie here and welcome back to the channel. Now, as many of you know, I've just finished my first year at Warwick Medical School on the graduate entry programme and in several weeks, the new first years will actually be joining us. You guys start a week after my year in second year starts and so I thought it would be a good point to clear up for those of you starting and those of you who want to come to Warwick in the future just to give you a little idea as to what the first year encompasses from start to finish and what your experience might be like. If you want further details that I don't cover in the video, please just leave me a comment below. I wanted to keep this as concise as possible, but I'm happy to answer any questions. So jumping straight in, when you arrive at Warwick Medical School in first year, you start what's known as Learning Medicine Week. Now this is, it's kind of what Freshers Week would have been in your undergrad degree, but you do have a little bit more to do it basically covers the basic science that you're going to need for the course, the biology and the chemistry, and it gets you ready and adjusted to the new environment for where you're going to be learning now as a medical student. It basically does prepare you for that transition from student to medical student, and there is a lot of difference. It will cover things like study skills, mindfulness, how to look after yourself, how to organise your time, and do pay attention because it does become important. And then as soon as that week is over, you officially start block one. You become a Warwick Medical student. Now the year is split into five of these five week blocks during the preclinical year. The year is split into five of these five week blocks, each of which cover a core area of preclinical medicine. And note that I say preclinical medicine there because what that means is it focuses on the science underpinning the medicine. So what is normal and what is abnormal, you're learning about the science as opposed to the clinical management, and that's a really important difference. Each block is then subdivided into themes, and these are the sort of core teaching areas, which covers things like anatomy, physiology, law, ethics, pharmacology, social and population perspectives, or SOCPOP, as it's called at Warwick. So you have all these different classes, and then after five weeks, so at the end of every block, you have a compulsory little assessment it's just an online test that maybe takes 90 minutes-ish, something like that to do, depending on what it is, obviously. But don't worry about these, they don't count for anything, they're just used really to track your progression so that the university can refer you for help if they think you need it. So going back to the block structure, block one, the one you will start in September when you arrive, is health metabolism and homeostasis. This basically covers the basic molecular biology, cellular biology, and uh, systems biology for living, keeping you alive. And as well as that, you have, it's mostly abdominal stuff, the biology, the physiology, the anatomy. So you'll be looking at things like the liver, the pancreas, the kidney, how they all work on a physiological level, particularly something like the kidney, the blood supplies to all of them, the pathology, that sort of thing. And teaching is mainly delivered to first years in the big lecture theater in Warwick Medical School on the Gibbet Hill campus. And then it's also explored through case-based learning several times a week as well. You might have heard this referred to as PBL uh, in other medical courses, but it's essentially the same thing. And the way this works is that you'll be split down into smaller groups. I think there were eight in my group. And as best as possible, the university tries to give you people from loads of different backgrounds so everyone can bring their own strengths to bear. And you essentially explore patient cases um, in your group and work through them. You have a facilitator with you to help facilitate this, I guess. And you use them as a framework for learning and revision and trying to get the diagnosis if you can. And this is also where you'll start to get used to things like looking at the results of blood tests, ECGs, respiratory tests, things like that, common clinical tests that you would apply to patients. And the lecturers do try and relate the CBL cases to the lectures you've had. This isn't always possible, but most of the time it does work out. And I would say, as a tip from someone that has been through this learning process once, the goal of CBL is to help your learning and your revision. It, the point of it is not to nail the diagnosis, because you don't really learn anything from that. It's about working together as a group to make sure everyone understands both what is normal, and only then, once you've covered what is normal, do you look at the pathology. And then Friday is one of the highlights of the year for many people. Fridays are spent at University Hospital Coventry in Warwickshire, an absolutely enormous and very well equipped teaching hospital outside Coventry. 
And the way these work are on Fridays, you will spend half a day in anatomy and half a day in clinical skills. So at the start of the course, I had anatomy teaching in the morning and then you switch to the other one halfway through the year. So later on, I would have had anatomy in the afternoon, clinical skills in the morning. So let's talk about anatomy very quickly. Anatomy consists of several sessions throughout your, your half of the day. You'll have demonstrations with doctors, surgeons, people who can explain it to you. And this uses fresh tissue and plastinated specimens. So you get a really, really intricate look of um, the relevant systems that you need to be learning. If you've never seen a plastinated specimen before, go ahead and look them up. They are absolutely incredible and one of the best anatomy learning tools I think that exists. You'll then usually have a small group seminar of maybe 20 of you, and that's with the head of anatomy, Professor Tunstall, so you get a really good chance to go through some small aspect of what you need to know. And then some weeks you'll also have sessions with some radiologists, radiographers as well. And these usually include live demonstrations so you can get yourself ultrasounded or something in front of the rest of the seminar group, which can be really eye-opening. As I've mentioned in my vlog videos before, you do have an anatomy workbook for each of the blocks, which contains the pre-reading and pre-work you're expected to do before the Friday session. Do try and do it if you get the chance. It really makes a lot of difference when you get into the hands-on demonstration. You can understand things a bit better. But on the flip side of that, there is a lot of it to do some weeks, and some weeks you just won't have the time to do it. I've been there. I was one of those people that tried to do it every single week. Sometimes it just doesn't happen. And then clinical skills, uh, the other half of your Friday, as the name suggests, covers the clinical procedures that you might be expected to do for your OSCEs. Without going into too much detail, OSCEs are basically mock assessment scenarios in which you will be hands-on with a patient demonstrating what you've learned in front of an assessor. And this might include things like cardiovascular respiratory exams or joint exams or gal screens, things like that. And again, you have a workbook to have a look at every week. Try and do those. There's a lot less to do than anatomy. But the workbooks tend to cover more the rationale of why you're doing what you're doing and then the sessions are a chance to actually get hands-on and practice on each other. So that's the basic structure kind of of block one and two which run up until Christmas. We've covered block one, block two is cardiac and respiratory, and you'll have CBL and your lectures and your Fridays and that will see you through to Christmas. After Christmas it does get a little bit more exciting, at least it did for me, because as well as the sessions I've already talked about, you then get GP placements and bedside teaching introduced. And the frequency of how often these sessions happen is subject to change, but bedside teaching is a chance to go on the wards in one of the local hospitals with doctors, it could be consultants or foundation doctors or whatever. You go on the wards with them in small groups of maybe four, five, six people, and it's a chance to practice the skills that you've done in clinical skills. So you'll be taking histories, practicing your clinical exams and getting feedback from real patients and the doctors. And these are randomly allocated, but you could be sent to UHCW, again, the big teaching hospital, or one of the smaller hospitals. I myself was based at George Eliot Hospital, which is just outside Nuneaton. And I really like that change because it's much smaller and you've got a lot more hands-on, quiet exposure to patients and doctors. It wasn't super busy all the time. So there was chance to unwind. Our consultants regularly took us for coffee and things after cases, and we could talk to them about what their career was like, um, get feedback on what we'd done, and, and just generally level with them, kind of one-to-one, -one, and that was a really good experience. There is also a little bit of what American medical students call pimping, which is where consultant sort of spot test you and say what is this give me three causes of this and don't worry if you mess it up I get really flustered when someone asks me something like that offhand made loads of mistakes it doesn't matter it's just your chance to learn and eventually you will also have to complete two case reports on patients that you've seen and this covers everything from their drugs to their management to recommended procedures it's a good chance to to kind of simulate playing doctor, I suppose. So now we're after Christmas. So between Christmas and Easter, you will have block three and four. So block three is neuro. That was my favorite block of the year. So you're covering neuroanatomy, neurophysiology. There's probably the most new information for most people in there, unless you did neuro before. Then block four is the musculoskeletal block. So lots of orthopedics, you're doing skeletal system, gross muscle anatomy, and that's really interesting as well. 
then you have the Easter break, and then after Easter, but before your exams, you have the final block, block five, which is obstetrics, reproductive health, sexual health, and paediatrics, that kind of thing. And you should know then that you have five weeks for Easter, or at least we did, again, it may change, but Easter is the main revision period because after block five, you have one week off, like a reading week, and then the exams are on you. And all the exams for Warwick Med School are at the end of the year. Everything you've done in the year is tested over that set of exams. And if you pass them, you can progress to second year. So on to the topic of exams. Warwick, like many medical schools, has a right to sit policy. And what this means that in order to have the right to sit your final exams and hopefully progress through to second year, you'll need to make sure that you've done um, a kind of fairly obvious list of things. One of those is 80% attendance of all compulsory sign-in sessions. Um, sign-in sessions might be things like CBL, Friday anatomy and clinical skills sessions, bedside teaching, basically things that aren't lectures. No lectures are compulsory. I recommend you go to as many as possible but they are all recorded. You don't have to go to lectures if you don't want to, but make sure you keep up 80% attendance of those sign-in sessions. And that's actually a limit set by the GMC externally to the medical school. That's something that would be commonplace in most, if not all medical schools. So as well as that 80% attendance, you have to have at least attempted and completed all of the five end of block assessments that you're required to do. Again, doesn't matter if you pass or not, but you have to have done them all have to have done your case reports basically do the things that they ask you to do and as long as you do everything they ask you to do you're fine and they are really kind of commonplace things everyone in your year will be doing them anyway so it's fine assuming you do all of those things you'll then take the exams now without going into too much detail you can go and read my blog on my website if you want to learn more about specifically how the exams go but you have written papers, or we had written papers one week, and then the week after that we had the OSCEs to test us on our clinical skills. And then two or three weeks later, after those first sits, you will find out whether or not you've passed as the pass list is released. Then if you have passed, you're done uh, for the year at that point, you can enjoy the summer. And if you have not, the reset exams are then two or three weeks later, depending on how the timetable works. And then I think it's a week if you take the reset exams between sitting them and finding out uh, whether or not you've passed that time. If you've passed either on the first sits or on the reset exams, that's perfectly fine. The goal of first year is just to get through either, either of those stages. It's really fine. It makes very little difference to anything uh, what you do. At that point, if you haven't passed the resits, you will basically either be offered the chance to resit the year or you will be asked to withdraw from the course, depending on what your circumstances are, but that's up to the assessments board to decide. And that's kind of where I am now. I passed the first sits of my exams, very luckily, and I'm now awaiting, in a couple of weeks, the start of my second year, um, the more clinical part of the course, which I'm really looking forward to, but I just thought this would be useful to do for you guys that are about to come up into first year and for those of you who might be interested in applying in the future. Just some final things to round out. First year of the Warwick course is very hard. There's not really any way around that. It will challenge you probably like you've not been challenged by anything before, not because the subject matter, again we all say this all the time, the subject matter is not particularly complicated but there's an awful lot of it. You need to know. It's not just a case of knowing a little about a lot or a lot about a little, you need to know a lot about a lot, <laughs> um, but a whole lot. And it's really, really different. Nothing can really prepare you for it. Doesn't matter what degree you did, what background you come from, first year here is a big leveler. Your background does not seem to have any influence over how well you do. So just come here, make the most of it, engage with every learning opportunity you can, and get support from anyone you can. There's a ton of support available, both from staff and students, like to, to a level I've certainly never seen before in my previous education, and it will change your life. You know, even having come through the first year, I feel like I've developed a lot, both personally and professionally, and it's something that I would really encourage everyone to do. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you'd like to see more videos like this, 
please be sure to hit the like button at the bottom of the page, subscribe to the channel and click the little notification bell to make sure that notices are enabled so you don't miss a video. If you'd like to read more about specifically what I've been doing, you can go to my website postgradmedic.com and read my daily medical school blog as well as hints and tips when it comes to the UK CAT interviews and interviews with people who have come up to Warwick from different backgrounds as well. I'm on social media as well, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, the whole gamut, you can find links to everything in the description below as well. Take care guys and I'll see you in another video. Bye bye.